Hello, TikTok viewers, and welcome to this Mind Mangler Q&A here at the Edinburgh Fringe. I'm here with Jonathan Sayer and Henry Lewis, the two stars of Mind Mangler, member of the Tragic Circle, and I am Henry Shields, one of the writers of Mind Mangler, member of the Tragic Circle. The other two writers are Jonathan Sayer and Henry Lewis. So it's all, I'm, I'm a very impartial host, but I'm going to be asking these guys questions, uh, and we're just going to chat about my Mangler for a bit. Mm. So, uh, are you guys ready for some softball questions? Yes. <laughs> Go easy on us. Yeah, I'll try, I'll try. Okay, so I'm going to be asking, I'm going to be get questions from you guys, so if you would like to ask anything, that's how I don't use TikTok, to be honest. <laughs> what do you do? You comment below, maybe. Yeah, and Manoli over there will sort of shout questions in when I run out of ideas. Uh, it's all going to be, you know, this sort of vibe, so get used to it. <laughs> so let's start off. Uh, John. Yes. Why don't you uh, tell us, for someone who's never seen uh, a mischief show before, mm -hmm. give us an idea uh, of what Mind Mangler is. Mind Mangler is a show, with, like with all our shows, I suppose we're trying to deliver as many laughs as possible within an hour long time frame. But I suppose the added bonus of this show is there's also some really cool magic. So things that genuinely will make you leave scratching your head. And then on top of that, there's a nice story between the Mind Mangler and Keith who's um, who Henry plays and his stooge Mickey um, who I play and their relationship and kind of they go through a bit of a roller coaster as the show goes on where maybe their friendship comes under as much threat as the show and that resolves but really it's just a very very silly show where Henry is a terrible mind reader. <laughs> Hen is there anything you'd like to add to that? No, I think that's a pretty complete uh, picture of the show. Uh, so yeah, I, I, I play I play Keith um, who uh, yeah appears on stage as the uh, the mind mangler who is a mind reader, but he yeah I mean I guess the character has a real kind of chip on his shoulder I think mm. he's uh, he's had a a tough uh, and lonely career I think as as a as a mind reader he's recently gone through a divorce yep. um, uh, we sort of have it's not actually in the script but we sort of have a backstory that his uh, ex wife used to be his stooge so she used to do all of the stuff that he needed doing she used to be in the audience she used to say the right number or the right card or whatever it was and then she kind of left and so now he's kind of lumbered with uh with 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 mickey uh who john plays um and uh, mickey is 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 the stooge but he's he's not quite as hot on the stooging no uh, he struggles with Amy with was. knowing what what he can and can't say in in whatever moment yes yeah great so Shields, can I just add, um, yeah. there's been a lady who has been commenting on TikTok for some time since we did Mischief Movie Night, just saying, do a cat noise. So I'd just like to take this opportunity to say, meow. There you go. <laughs> Objective so, fulfilled. Yeah, there, there you go. Literally, you say it, we do it. That's kind of how this works, right? You proud of yourself in this moment? <laughs> no, no, no. Unfortunately, uh, no. I just heard that she did tune out after Movie Night. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There you go. Well, to nothing. anyone, it's, it's, it's National Cat Day. I mean, it's it's today. National Cat Day. And just for balance, woof. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. We are impartial. Both sides of the argument. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, in that spirit, what's the worst thing about my Mangler? No. <laughs> uh, so, so well, um, how's the fringe been so far? Amazing. I mean, it really has. Like, we haven't been at the Fringe for a long time. Um, mm. We last did the Fringe, I think, like around 2015 or so, yeah. And um, we did the Fringe, first of all, when we were drama students. So I think we did seven or eight years at the Fringe. And then it's probably been another seven years since we've done it. Um, and, um, yeah, I forgot. I, I mean, it's intense because we've, mm. we've got three different shows um, in Edinburgh. Um, so getting all those, the first day we did all the different shows, obviously well, we, we, we're, we're already in two of them, but um, yeah, no, so it's intense getting everything together um, and, 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 and yeah, but, but, but it's been a blast and it's um, really exciting that The Fringe is back this year and it's just a sort of, I'd forgotten what a lovely sort of creative and mm. cool environment it is. Well, you mentioned that we're doing three shows here. What are those shows, Henry? Well, it's funny you ask, Henry, because <laughs> the three shows that we're doing are Charlie Russell Aims to Please, which is a gorgeous, gorgeous show, very funny, but also very moving. Mm -hmm. That's on at Pleasance Below. Uh, and then you can also come and see Mischief Movie Night, which is on at the Pleasance EICC, uh, and that is at 6.30 every day. And you can also come and see the show that we're talking about right now, My Mangler Member of the Tragic Circle, which is on at 9.30 in the evening at Pleasance Beyond. Oh, what an interesting plug. 
John. Yes. How's your fringe been? My fringe has been good. Like, I'm, I'm definitely... Um, so the last time we did this, as Hen said, it was kind of eight years ago. I'm probably nine the last time we did a full, full fringe. Mm. And I'm finding that I feel ten years older than, than when I last did it, just in the sense that, like, you know, we're, we're literally running from venue to venue and all that kind of stuff. It's so nice. Like, it's, it's so exciting to see... I'm trying to see more shows this year, so I've seen some really good stuff so far. It's so nice to see kind of new companies bringing new work up and also kind of old friends. And it's it's just so brilliant that this is back, right? Like what an, what what a fantastic what a fantastic amazing month and how lovely is it that it, that, that, that it's happening again and and that you can really feel the excitement everywhere you go and um, yeah, if if you're thinking about going um, and you're not sure yet, like I really urge you to come down for two days or come up wherever you are because it is a really special month. I don't think there's anything quite like it, particularly not in the UK. Well, it's certainly given us a big opportunity, I think, because, yeah. you know, we started out at the Fringe um, when we were very young. We were 18, 19 when we first did our, our, our first improvised shows here. And I think it's an amazing place because I think that um, even if you're a, a sort of, you know, relatively unknown and you're new and you're doing new work, um, you can still get an audience, you know, and, mm. and there's still, you know, it's, um, that's not always the case. You know, sometimes it's hard uh, to get an audience for new work. But in Edinburgh, that's what everyone's here to see, I think, is new stuff, unusual stuff as well. So um, it's really fun for that. I feel like if you're starting out as well, you get almost the experience that you might get in a year or two years and learnings of performing and doing gigs mm. in a year or two all in a month because you you know you can do promotional gigs and you can do your shows and you really learn a lot incredibly quickly and, and we're finding that as well like we've changed my mangler every single night so far because you know the audiences are so great here but you learn a lot and you can change and hone the show and yeah it's just it's been great how's you how's flipping the flipping this on its head how's your fringe interviewer <laughs> it's good <laughs> Next question. I have, I have the, the, the handheld mic, so I have all the power. Uh, we're going to move on. So in my mangler, let's talk about my mangler. In my mangler, there is a section where you, I want to, where you taste the audience. Do you taste the jobs? Taste uh, the jobs, the, I smell the jobs. You yeah. smell the jobs. Yep, yep, yep. You smell the audience members' jobs. Uh, so what's the weirdest job you've smelled? <laughs> well, I mean, I'll tell you what, there's been quite a few very, very strange ones. Here in Edinburgh, probably the weirdest one we had was an AI ecosystems mm -hmm. marketing manager i didn't know quite what that was i don't think he did no i don't think he did either no <laughs> um, no that was amazing <laughs> extraordinary he, 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 he was in he was he, he, he yeah i don't know what he did and he found it impossible to explain oh wow okay cool we had my favorite one that we ever had i think was when we were doing magic goes wrong at the apollo and we had someone who said that they were a parish administrator and I said, what does a parish administrator do? And she said, we keep the vicar under control. <laughs> <laughs> Which I thought was great. Really enjoyed that. There was someone who said that they were a traffic designer. And I, I took the mickey out of them for probably about five minutes for being a traffic designer. And then they said, no, no, graphic designer. And I thought that was, that was OK. And then <laughs> it's me not hearing them. Um, and then, and then, we had, then there was the day when we had a horse whisperer, which was completely, completely mad. And that was apparently entirely genuine because I actually met someone at the fringe a few days ago who said that it was there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> They'd been whispered to. <laughs> no, no, the sister. <laughs> yeah, that was the proof. That's how you know. Uh, a wasp confirms it. Uh, no, but the, the, their sister had come and um, said, yeah, no, you, and you, uh, you got my sister when you were in London and she actually is a horse whisperer. Unless it was an elaborate ruse, but no, it was really was a horse whisperer. Wow. I, which I didn't really know. I didn't really know there really was horse whisperers. No, I thought that was just a movie. Yes, no, but they're then real. And they though. based it on something. Yeah, of course. What is a horse whisperer? They whisper to horses. They say, they say calm down. So calm if, down. Yeah, if a horse is having troubles, if they a like horse being is, whispered to. But yeah, it's like, a, well, I, I don't know. Calm it's down. a kind of. You're making a scene. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like being whispered to. Everyone's like looking a, at you. <laughs> like a parent to, yeah. a, to an out of control child at a birthday party who's yeah. had too much cake. Yeah, exactly. Car. Stop galloping, you can have a carrot. <laughs> Later. Yeah. You're going to be a great dad one day, John. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, John, uh, tell us about the blend of magic and comedy in The Mind Mangler, because I, as one of the writers, have to know that it is a tricky balance to strike. Uh, but why don't you elaborate on that? Yeah, I, well, it's so interesting because there are points when magic... Because we've, we've, we've also written another show, Magic Goes Wrong, that we should probably touch on just because that's where these two characters... That's, that's kind of where they came from. But I think what we've found is there are points where magic and comedy 
there's this incredible alchemy where it's you know it's it's hand and a glove kind of stuff where it fits perfectly, and then there are other points where that is like it is it is more of a a, a um, more of a tussle right because I think in comedy you want to kind of do a funny thing or start something and then you really want to stay there and build it and build it and build it whereas I think in some sometimes in magic you kind of have you know the big reveal in magic you can't get any better than that so you kind of want to do a big like whoa how have they done that and then you want to kind of move on to the next thing whereas sometimes in comedy actually once you've done that big reveal you actually then want to start building on that and you want to stay there for a bit longer and I think sometimes those things can be difficult to to massage together but hope I think we've got the balance right in this show I really do um, but yeah that's how that's what I'd say I agree we have <laughs> <laughs> I think that probably even something that we've realized just since being here I think and just started to do the show for audiences is I think that it's all about what the what the kind of net the narrative of the two characters needs in that moment mm. and I think sometimes it's right for it to be a uh, a comedy moment and sometimes actually it's right for it to be something that really kind of um uh, you know, for it's all you know, all about the stories of when Keith, the mind magnet, has a win, when he has a lose, when the audience have a win, when he's working with the audience, when he's working mm. against, the, against the audience. And I think it's tra it's tracking. Once we've started to track all that through, I think that starts to answer the questions and unlock the questions of, you know, should that be a comedy moment or a moment where comedy is the focus, or should that be a magic moment where magic is the focus? Mm. I think as well, like the the um, the, the magic's not explored in a traditional magic way where you've got someone who's standing there who's kind of claiming to be incredibly competent or a master of psychology or a master of the elements and then they just kind of demonstrate that they are in this you have a character who 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 isn't a master and they're not in control and the things that are happening that are magic almost happen around them and to them and i think that's a really fun way of exploring magic but also that means that the way it's framed you've got a there's a lot of conversations about working out how to frame the magic and and also like I think magic works when the audience feel in the same way that's a, th a similarity between magic and comedy like I think they both function best when the audience feel utterly relaxed and in safe hands and you're always trying to work out a way to make sure that the audience feel relaxed and in safe hands but also we can have fun with Keith not being in control and the, the evening getting away from Keith, but also staying with Henry Lewis, and I think that's a that's the, tricky. The in control, out of control thing is such a is such a key point, I think, because it's just yeah, it is totally like you you want the audience to believe that yeah that the, the, the mind wrangler is somewhat out of control mm. but they need to feel like the, the the show itself is is in control i think otherwise it becomes so we actually had a we had a weird moment actually last night in the show where something didn't quite go something didn't quite work something went wrong mm. for real and um i think there was you had just had that sense there was a slight sense of ooh, is that is everything okay and it just took, took a few minutes to kind of for us to, 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 get. To, to get to get back on track after that because it just was i think there was a moment of of us of us of them feeling like the show wasn't the souffle concerned. sunk briefly and then we got it back up again yeah, yeah, yeah. as you do with souffles <laughs> you yeah. pump it back yeah. up yeah. you pump it back up <laughs> yeah. no, no, if it's served in a restaurant they come, with a, they come with a little pump yeah, they in case it goes down yeah. <laughs> traditional souffle yeah. uh, Hen <laughs> now, there's a lot of magic in the show and mm -hmm. you've had to learn a huge amount of magic in the yes, show yes. do you have any sort of history of magic in your life have you, have you ever had anything <laughs> to do with magic before um, well, uh, so a little bit. That's not, a leading question. Yeah, Very no, good. Not at all. <laughs> so I did. I, so I did a bit of magic when I was a kid, but I hadn't really done any magic for a while um, because I sort of gone to drama school and obviously where I met you guys and we, you know, I didn't hadn't done magic during that time really. But I did uh, perform in the Young Magician of the Year competition. I think back in. Would have been like two thousand and five or something, two thousand and six, around then, when I was sort of, I don't know, how old would I have been? Um, Sixteen, yeah. seventeen. Mm. And um, and it was weird because um, I performed in that and that I sort of briefly met Ben Hart, who is a magician and he's our magic consultant on the show. He's also doing uh, uh, an excellent show here, uh, Wonder at Pleasant's Grand. And um, mm. so yeah, it's um, it's um, yeah. So I sort of I sort of I knew him from way way back, ten fifteen years before. Um, we did that, that competition, and it was it's every two years. And then he did the competition two years later and, and won, and went on to be. A, a magician. Do you wish you'd gone the same route? Would you have liked to be a magician? <laughs> well, I've always, I've always enjoyed magic, but no, I think I think I made the right choice because I think that um, uh, no, I, I really I really love sort of writing and performing and and, and mischief stuff and comedy, obviously. And Ben Hart hates his life. 
Oh, <laughs> Ben's not watching. He just loves his life. I really doubt he's watching. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, he does love his life. He's a great guy. Uh, so, John, what's the weirdest thing that's happened to you at the Fringe? Weirdest thing that's happened to me at the Fringe ever um, was years and years ago I performed on a bus. There was a gig um, that oh, I was us, sent tell to. Tell us about that at length. Um, it, OK, so it was a, a, a 9 a.m., or 8.30 a.m. promotional gig, um, and it was on a bus, a pink bus, and a um, very small audience. And, the um, bus, we should say, was kitted out. It was parked up and kitted out with all sorts of, I don't know what you'd say, like trinkets, I suppose. So all the windows were covered with teddy bears and mm. sort of old toys and broken dolls. It was quite an, it was a very odd, very odd venue. Um, Sorry, no, that was like, you, you couldn't even stand up. You had to sit at the back of the bus and one person would have a ukulele and the other person would not have a ukulele because, well, I suppose both could have a ukulele, but only one of us played the ukulele, meaning that we couldn't both have it. <laughs> I suppose you could both have it, but one of them wouldn't be able to play it. And we did, we did like, songs <laughs> and we did, like, uh, daft comedy skits um, and... There, there's one gig in particular that you've reminded me of on that bus. Oh, I, I, I don't want to go like, into it too much, but yeah, I, I, had, I had a shocker because they were really hard to gauge because like, we were doing shows quite late at night and quite often there'd be quite young kids on this really early morning, uh, really early morning gig and it would be really hard to, to, to keep... You, you, one of the really crazy things about Edinburgh is you're jumping... This is particularly when we're younger. We've got better at it now, thankfully, but you're jumping time zones and vibes of gigs all the time. <laughs> so you'll be up at 8.30 doing a show that is predominantly for very young kids, but then you're going on sometimes till 11 p.m. midnight. And I think I remember for that particular gig when I was about 20, I, I, I struggled to keep it all very family friendly um, very early in the morning. Um, but I tell you what, what, what happened? I genuinely Did can't remember. Did you sing a song? It. I sang a song. How did the I, song go? I'm not going to go into it because <laughs> I remember the song. Well, let's not go into it. But it was very embarrassing, and um, I, I think you, know, you can sing that to song any, now. To any of the um, to any of the children or parents who watched that gig years ago, sorry. Fully grown now, scarred um, for life. But um, <laughs> I tell you another. I tell you another funny moment um, that I had at the fringe when I was younger was um, we. Obviously, you'll notice there's lots of posters around the fringe, and I had this idea that the perfect way to advertise the show was to forget about the wall space because you know, all the walls are covered, and to use the floor space. So I got this stencil that had our titles on, and I bought a load of semi permanent chalk, and I went all around the mile and all around Edinburgh transferring the name of the show onto the floor. And I thought, this is brilliant. No one's thought of doing this. The fools, I'm a marketing genius. And I was doing it one day and I got this tap on the shoulder and I was like, not now, I'm doing that. I'm doing the stencils. And then I got another tap and I looked up and it was the police and they made it very clear that I, um, I needed to remove all of the stencil work that I'd done around Edinburgh. And then I spent the next two days frantically scrubbing the floors with hot soap and water um, and they were all removed. Excellent. Uh, Minoli, do we have any questions coming in live? Yes, we do. Mm. Uh, but first of all, the AI guy is watching. Ooh, <laughs> AI guy is watching. <laughs> he, also, he does not know what he does. So. There we go. He doesn't know what he does. No one knows. Great. Well, hi, AI oh, guy. Um, someone asks, what number am I thinking of? What number are you thinking of? Okay. 37. And we'll find out you can let us if know. that is correct <laughs> yes. in several minutes. <laughs> Is the mind mangler based on anyone That's in particular? Is the mind mangler based on anyone in particular? That's a very good question. So, um, um, no, no one person, but there are definitely influences from various different uh, mind readers. When we first worked with Penn and Teller writing Magic Goes Wrong and initially creating that character, we went out to Las Vegas um, and we saw lots and lots of different magic shows there. And there were various different mind readers, which I won't name, but there was one in particular who was on, he had a show at this casino, kind of big round room, and um, 
he was really, really rude <laughs> to the audience. Um, and I think um, there were just a few moments where things didn't quite go to plan, where he had there was a number that he'd written down and someone was supposed to say a number and it was supposed to be the number. And uh, he said, can you please confirm that that is the number? Um, he's like, that is 538. And he, the guy took it and he was like, kind well, that's of. kind of 53 something. <laughs> and the guy was like, yeah, it's 53. And he had a proper go at the guy on stage. And I just thought that was really, <laughs> it was really funny. Um, just this slightly sort of put upon kind of guy, and so that was kind of part. That was kind of part of it. Wonderful. Um, John, someone asks how you decided on the Scouse accent. For Mickey. How did you decide on the Scouse accent for Mickey? So, because I think at the start I was playing him a lot more like, I like, suppose, like Dennis, which is a character I've played for most of my adult life, um, and it just felt a little bit too. Um, he felt a little bit too naive and a little bit too wooden and a little bit too much not like a real person, I suppose, in that, in that environment. Um, so we just started, we, we, we are indeed the show when we were doing Mischief Movie Night. We did a little UK tour and for a few of the venues, so in Cambridge and Cheltenham and a couple of other places, we did like these kind of scratch nights where we did like little bits of the show. So we did the opening of My Mangler and uh, Mickey and a few other bits and we just did a week where we just kept trying like really different stuff, like different accents, different just different playing styles, you know, are they naive, are they more confident? And we did the Scouse accent and that just seemed to work. It just seemed to give him a little bit more, because I think what's funny about our dynamic in that show is that for the most part, Mickey is, is the fool and is lent on, but sometimes he's actually a couple of steps ahead of the mind mangler and there's something a bit more worldly wise about him and a bit more on the front foot than the norm than what we've done in the past and the scout seems to kind of bring that out i would say lovely, lovely. uh what time are we on we've got seven minutes we've got seven minutes well you know what? We'll, we'll probably cut it off a little early uh because i don't have a huge amount more questions <laughs> <laughs> but let's do some quick fire questions uh hem describe my mangler in one word uh, uh, sad. Oh. <laughs> it's a bit sad. It's a bit sad. It's a bit sad. That's, that's a great promotional <laughs> clip there. But funny, sure. but funny, but funny. Yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, John, describe my manga in one word. Sad. Yeah. No, um, <laughs> magical. Magical's a better one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I meant my manga the show more than my manga the tragic. Oh, oh I see, I see, I see the sorry, character. The character. Fun, funny no, the and show magic. Isn't, the show isn't sad, yeah. Let's try it again. Yeah. You give one yeah, word, okay, I'll give it Yeah, we'll cut there. <laughs> And describe Mind Mangler the Show in one word. Horrid. No, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, uh, no. Mind Mangler the Show is funny. And magical. There you go. John, describe your dad in one word. Uh, uh, um, I, 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 I don't know. <laughs> uh, Doesn't know uh, his practical, own father. Practical. Practical. A practical man. <laughs> He's practical. Uh, Hen, describe uh, the character Keith in a noise. Ooh. <laughs> really yeah. selling this show. <laughs> Again, that's the character, but the show, no, the show is fun. Uh, John, describe Mickey in a noise. Oh! <laughs> and you can expect just that, that and more if you come and see <laughs> my mangler at the Pleasant Courtyard. Uh, so I think we'll wrap it up there. Thank you everyone so much for joining us. Thank you. Uh, I've been Henry Shields, this is Jonathan Sayer, and this is Henry Lewis. Uh, please do come and see My Mangler and all of the other Mischief shows at The Fringe. You can find out more information about them on our website, mischiefcomedy.com. Bye! Bye!